Hi, I'm Jonathan Davis with Aspire Bakeries. Today we're gonna to talk about La Brea Bakery and sort of the five principles of making great artisan bread. Some of our main ingredients that we have here that are all non-GMO can be organic if necessary. This is our base bread flour. This is made specifically for us. It's a high protein flour which gives great crust development and open interior structure. The whole wheat flour here adds a, a level of earthiness as well as uh, nutrition to a lot of our breads. The same goes for the rye. The rye is a whole grain, adds a, a depth of flavor, as well as adding color and again, a sort of earthy flavor to most of our breads. Our nine grain, not only does it give it texture and nutrition, it's really used for introducing whole grains into our breads while at the same time maintaining structure. So we often use these in combination to get various textures and flavors. So this is used in pretty much everything we make. The whole wheat flour is used in, in our wheat baguettes, in our whole grains. Rye is usually used in our whole grain as well. And of course, this, uh, the whole grain mix is used is primarily in our whole grain, but it's also in all of our various other multigrains. So there's three main parts of fermentation. So we have our starter. That has to be fed on a daily basis. So to maintain that is, is a lot of work, especially at scale. The second part of the fermentation is what we call the bulk fermentation. After we do the mixing, then we let the dough rest for anywhere from two to four hours or anywhere in between. And that's what we call our primary fermentation. The second fermentation is what they call proofing or what we call retarding because what we do is we create a cool moist environment for our uh, breads to uh, rise a second time or the secondary fermentation. The reason why we do that is again flavor development, structure, crust, all the elements that are important to the artisan process. One of the main characteristics of artisan bread is that open interior structure. Uh, that open interior structure has a great texture but it also implies great fermentation and time spent on the uh, loaves. Time is one of the key elements of the artisan process. Taking the time, let things do, you know, rise naturally, let the flavors develop, let the, the, the breads kind of take on their own characters. I mean, that's really part of the artisan process. Uh, other people or other bakeries choose to speed that up for cost reasons or um, throughput reasons, but the results are different. There's no replicating this process quickly. Now we're gonna go into the shaping part of the process. Now we have a nice soft uh, piece of dough here, which we work very hard to retain all of its gas. Out on the lines, we use our low stress system that sort of mimics that, keeps all the gas in there because that will then in turn provide us with an open interior structure. The gases are formed from the fermentation process. And so that's what we're trying to preserve as much as possible. So in shaping, you wanna just be as gentle as possible. And on the lines, we sheet it into a workable piece here, and then we will fold it over itself. You know, and the machines do this. They all mimic this sort of activity and then they roll it up into a final shape. So this is gonna be a baguette. Now I have to elongate it and the machines are a lot better than I in doing this. Uh, so I have to kind of put some work into it, but essentially we use a series of rollers to elongate the baguette as gentle as possible to maintain the shape and the length that we're trying to get. So there's a baguette and you know, different shapes have different purposes. A baguette can be used as a sandwich, but you have different crust to crumb ratios. On a baguette, this is gonna have a lot more crust, almost equal part crust to crumb, but say you're doing a round, which again, our machines very much mimic the action that I'm doing here, but probably a little bit better. So here's a round, right? Yeah, so the crust to crumb ratio is obviously a lot different here. You have a lot more interior uh, than you do uh, exterior. So it's going to have a different, different eating quality, like our Italian round is in this shape. You have a lot more a softer interior than you do crisp exterior. Obviously, this is going to be a different purpose than this. You can do the soup bowl here. You can actually make it a sandwich, uh, if you like. Table bread. Um, all of these can be table bread, but there's definitely different uses for different shapes. I'll do a different shape here. 
Again, it all follows the same sort of principles, trying to maintain all that gas, but at the same time, get it in the shape that you want. So this is gonna be sort of a loaf, a small loaf. And we can do loaves in different sizes. Like I'm gonna do a larger loaf that, to mimic our extra large uh, that we do for food service. So again, dough is nice, gassy, ready to be shaped, folding it over on itself, trying to be as gentle as possible, making sure we seal the edges and then we just elongate it like that, very gently. So this one, obviously, is gonna have a lot more interior, very similar to the round, but it's in an elongated shape to provide as many slices as you can for sandwiches. So the next step of the process is gonna be scoring and baking. So this is our sourdough loaves. These have been secondary fermenting for six hours. They did a bulk fermentation for four hours prior to that. So a total of 10 hours. So now we're ready to go into the oven. So the first step is gonna be scoring it. Uh, for this particular loaf, we're gonna do one score. I'm telling the bread where I want it to expand once it hits the oven. If you don't do this, you won't know where it's gonna expand. It's just gonna blow out where it wants to blow out. It also allows you to see the interior as well as the exterior. So you're exposing all of the loaf. So you get, you get an idea of what you're going to get. It gives a nice darker bake to the lip of the score, which adds a lot of texture and flavor. Steam is a very important part of crust development when baking. It gives that nice crisp crust, but the interior is remaining nice and soft and, and moist. Next part of the process is the freezing process. So first we go into a cooling tower to bring the temperature down, and then we go into a spiral freezer, which freezes them individually before they get cased up. Freezing is our way of bringing it to customers without using any strange ingredients and without using any preservatives. Now, par baking is fully baked. The only difference is, is that the customer needs to take it out, refresh it, obviously, to, so it's not frozen, and also bring its finer color. As you can see, this, this color is very light. Our target color is much darker to really bring out that flavor in the crust. The difference between our take and bake and par bake is there's one additional ingredient added to help with shelf life, but the entire process is the same. Par baking allows our customers to bake off as much as they need when they need it. So it's a great way of managing waste and it's a great way, especially with labor shortages, to bring an artisan bread to your consumers without having to go through the entire process.